we are uh, the Occupy Bus Tour, and we are a group of activists tra traveling around the country. We are supporting and reporting on actions, um, and we are labeling GMO foods along the way, and we are also street medics. We have uh, the first mobile food, not bombs. Um, so wherever we go, we're feeding people, we're helping them with um, any medical care that we can. Um, and then... Uh, well, we also, we have almost everything that we had in Liberty Park. The Occupy Wall Street had in Liberty Park. We've got, as Stacy said, the first mobile food, not bombs chapter, People's Kitchen. We got uh, a, a medical clinic. We got uh, a small people's library, small comfort station. We've got an IT section. We've got a charging station uh, for the solar power. Uh, we can transport people. And info. And info. And we info have table. Info. What else we got? That's about it. Sanitation. We have things to clean up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little mobile occupation. Yeah. And then when we bring other occupiers, we have other things. Uh, you know. Um, Let's see, we, yeah. we visited people up in the farm that had that, uh, uh, the sacred tree. Who was, who was, who he was the uh, the keeper of the tree of life. Yeah, the keeper of the in, tree in of the life. In the park. Yeah. Oh yeah, one more thing. The bus's name is Godzilla. So that's what we refer to her as. Uh, and you can tell the history about Godzilla and why we called the bus Godzilla. Well, it's got, it's got, Mainly because it's got a bumper sticker inside that says, uh, "Okay, Godzilla, follow that car and step on it." And you know that and song, "Go, go, go, Godzilla." Yeah, yeah, we've been saying "Go, go, Godzilla" for a long time now. But uh, and the movie, the movie, you know, Godzilla started out because of the environmental destruction of the planet. That's why Godzilla woke up, and uh, uh, she wants to rectify things. Uh, and that's what we want to do. It's the environmental destruction of the planet, and Godzilla here is going to bring us around and help us rectify things. Yeah. Oh Please. wait. All right. Well, let me say it. And let me start from here, though. Okay. We, we did the solar panels on top, so now I'll show you the solar in the in in inside the bus, which is um, we have like, well, it comes. The solar panels are on top, and then there's a a hole here where the wires come down and then we have the uh, controller and the inverter and then all the batteries are hooked to the wires um, they run down and then uh, that's how we get power and so we can look at this and see how many volts or amps we're getting in you know from the Sun and uh, and then we can look at this and we can tell how much power we have and know uh, if we can use, um, you know, whatever. The, the kitchen stuff takes up the most. Uh, that drains our power pretty fast, but we have like a toaster oven and a hot plate and, you know, a thing for hot water and coffee. And then uh, we have the veggie oil and that's like under here and we have... Uh, well, what's, what's that for? This is what the um, car will run on instead of diesel. We can switch back and forth to diesel. Oh my God. But we can also use veggie oil. So this is the veggie oil tanks. And in the back is where we pump it into from wherever, whatever source we're getting the veggie oil mm. from. And it gets filtered. And then if we let it settle and then we pump, we transfer it into this. And then this is what the um, bus runs on. So we can switch it to veggie, and then it will run on the waste veggie oil, um, but it will also run on diesel, so. What, what gave you the idea to, to do this? I heard you're the brainchild behind this. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I was occupying Wall Street for a long time, and uh, we talked about like mobile occupations or a tour, you know, going to meet other people. Um, another thing is like I wanted to try to be like an example of what we should be doing, uh, what the solutions are. So I wanted to, while I was uh, protesting 
also I would be driving this, which is part of the solution, and also uh, not only protesting, but uh, finding people who were living part of the solution and talking about them and what they're doing so that it's not only like, what are your demands, but like, what's the solution? So this is like an experiment in trying to like live as close to what a solution might be or a piece of that solution. You know, um, we need to get off of um, oil and, uh, you know, not frack and uh, have the tar sands and the pipelines and uh, we can't go that way. We need to go a different way, better for the environment and for the people, you know. So that was why I wanted to, to convert it to veggie oil. And then, I mean the electric, the same thing, because that's running off of um, coal and they're destroying the mountains to get that coal. So like, that's like another piece that, so. So how much more economical is it to run vegetable oil rather than diesel fuel? Well, it's more economical because for the most part we can get it for free, so. Uh, and it's waste. It's stuff that you can't really do that much with. I mean, at this point, they do make like dog food and cat food with it and beauty products with it. And they do other stuff with the waste vegetable oil. But we could also be helping to run part of our cars off of vegetable oil. So that is thrown out anyway. So... How's the mileage on it? It's about the same. It's it's like the same like, mileage, little, little, you like, know, maybe eight, ten, ten miles a gallon, like for this, uh, twelve miles a gallon for for this bus, uh, and that's the same that it would run on diesel. So it uses it just like it would diesel. It's it's like uh, as long as it's hot and it's clean uh, through the filters, it uses it just the same way. So. So uh, who was who was the uh, mechanics behind this? Who actually know knew how to put this all together and um, switch switch out the for diesel? the veggie oil system? Um, I uh, found uh, Dr. Dave in Asheville, North Carolina, who is, they have a mechanic shop and an alternate fuel um, along part along with it. So he did the veggie oil conversion, and then the solar power. Um, one of our friends that is involved with, or was, because they closed now, the Occupy storefront on Long Island, um, he like helped uh, design the solar. He told me everything to get, and then we went um, to his house on Long Island, and then we all like helped to install the whole thing. You know, put up all of the electrical outlets and then uh, you know wire the panels and build the frame and and uh, put the boxes up you know connect everything and the batteries and he he had that uh, plan though and then we just uh, did what he told us to do did it cost a lot to do all that um it caught uh, yeah it did but if I think about how much it is to buy a new car it wasn't anymore. You know, when I put all the pieces together, how much the bus cost, how much the veggie oil conversion cost, and the solar power, and like to get everything set up, like I could have bought like, you know, a nice new van with that money, or this, and this is what I got, and I think that I'm a lot happier with this, so it's a lot more in line with my, you know, what I want to see in the world than like buying a yeah. new van, yeah. you know, so. It, it, it definitely um, um, speaks of, you know, your purpose. And yeah, and it's really messy now, so. Oh, it's but deep. we've kind of, you know, over time figured out how to like put all of these different things to carry all of our stuffs, you know, so that we can live on here, uh, have the computers and cameras and everything that we need to like do media and, um, you know, cook, do everything that we need to do. You know, sleep, rest, uh, help people with medic. Uh, we have all of that on here. So, and info, um, some books, and me and Ed are both street medics. So we do that too. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, like you said, a lot of people, you know, 
talk about it, but they don't actually live it. You know, and this is an example of living what you preach. Yeah. And I think it's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, this is great. I love it. Uh, one thing that's like kind of, you know, different about having solar power is you realize like how much energy everything takes. You know, like yes. as opposed to like charging a cell phone or charging a computer versus using a hot plate or the toaster oven or, you know, the water kettle, you know, like how much power does everything yeah. take? And, and oh, well, if we make coffee now, we're not going to be able to make coffee later because we're going to run out of power. So, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a shift uh, mentally, like, because we grow up in this society where you just plug something in or flip a switch and you can just leave it on all the time and it doesn't matter because the electricity seems like it's just endless, endless. You know, it's just the same thing with water too. We have to like, you know, get water from somewhere, fill up gallons, bring it back, you know, fill up our five gallon jug and, you know, we know about how long, you know, that will last. Like. It's, it's a little bit of a shift because you can't just turn on a faucet in your house and it just water comes out and you don't think about like where it comes from or how much you use or and so um, the solar panels charge batteries I'm assuming yeah they charge batteries we have six batteries um, like underneath all of this that uh, the solar panels will charge so then we can use that power like through the rest of the day and night when it's not sunny out um, and, but then if it rains for a couple of days, then we won't have power, you know, for until it gets sunny again, and then we'll have power, so. You ever gotten stuck because you don't have the power? Um, is well, the only thing that we can't do is like, you know, tr it has nothing to do with the, the um, how the bus runs. It only has to do with the electric for the bus in the way of like, um, you know, pl using the outlets and the, um, the cooking and charging stuff so and we're in the process of hooking up the wiring so that we can charge the solar storage with the alternator when the bus is running and reverse we can, if we run out of electricity in the the engine battery we can charge that up with the solar storage if we have it mm -hmm. so, yeah well. and then um, how we survive like just you know being able to do this full time is um, we've just uh, tried to figure out like what we can do to make money which um, I do have like a Etsy account and I sell patches and other stuff that I make on and and I get a little bit of money that way we have a we pay so we get a little bit of money that way um, you know we we don't have to pay a lot for um, diesel if we're using mostly the veggie oil um, so we don't have that expense as much and um, and then like food, we dumpster a lot, so we don't have that expense as much. So like what little money we can get, then we are able to just kind of, you know, keep on going. And so. When I can like feed myself. Yeah. And get like a lot of my basic needs from the stuff that other people like throw away that would end up in a landfill. Like that's like a direct action for one thing for me, because like I'm able, because of living off of their garbage, live outside of the system that they have to live in, I don't have to live in it. They throw so much stuff away that I can live off of what they throw away. Like, most of the time I don't have cigarettes. I just look for like a cigarette on the ground that somebody just threw down that's like Took not like two puffs hardly off, smoked. And yeah. I'm like, okay, well, there you go. Yeah. I can live off of their garbage, you know, around yeah. Wall Street. We found these around Wall Street. <laughs> Most of the food, we when we go there on the weekends, um, you know, uh, Dwayne Reed and uh, um, Starbucks and all of the people that have their carts, you know, they throw out so much food. And it's a pizza, a whole bag of stuff that an hour ago you would have bought, but now yeah. the store is closed. So... We can get it, and now we can even heat it up for people in our toaster oven. Like last night, that's exactly what we did. We were on Broadway. We went and got the pizza that they threw out, like that's in like the you know um, the, uh, window that they sell all day that they didn't sell. We brought it back. 
We put it in the toaster oven and we fed everybody hot pizza for dinner. So one of the ways that I'll make, uh, I'll try to make extra money too, is like going and uh, playing music on the sidewalk, sitting on the sidewalk, sewing my patches, you know, with the sign and uh, a cup or something out there. And uh, I'll always, like people will give me food, but maybe I won't eat it. I'll always pass it on to somebody else that I see. And, and the people, the homeless people on the streets, they'll give me stuff when they pass by and they see me sitting on the sidewalk just the same. They'll give me a dollar, like I'll see people playing music at a different spot and I'm playing music like around the corner. They come from spanging or busking or whatever and they give me a dollar that they made. Like the, mo the most people that have been like uh, um, the kindest are the people that have the, le the least. and. Uh, and we're all kind of like one, uh, I feel like uh, I can connect with them more because uh, they, they understand more what we need than uh, the people that just pass by without even thinking about it or looking. You guys seem really happy. Yeah. You do what you do, you know, live outside society and just yeah. say, fuck that shit, you know? Yeah, yes. So what did you guys do before this? Uh, I was still um, doing, act, have always done like activism stuff, uh, probably like since uh, the Iraq war started, you know, first protesting the Iraq war, and then it got into Monsanto, and um, I have four kids, and I homeschooled them for a long time, I was married, um, and then I came, went to Occupy Wall Street, and then, um, so the last couple of years have been like, kind of uh, a lot of changes for me because now I'm not married anymore and uh, and then my kids are in school and they live with their dad and then I see them when I am in Florida which really it's just new because it's just happened like uh, in the beginning of this year so we're still I'm still kind of getting used to that for when I first went to Occupy for the first like year and a half I just went back and forth. I would go home for a month, a couple weeks. I would come to New York for a couple weeks, a month. And I just went back and forth, back and forth. So now I've been gone for like a couple months at a time now. And then, uh, then I'll go see them for a couple months. So, and that's what I was doing before. So. So you had four people in here last night? No, we had six. Six? six. six. Oh my yeah, God. we had two people, two people. And then I slept here, and Ed slept in the driver's seat for a while, and then ended up here, right? Yeah. So. So tried to sleep. There, so yeah. you guys gave up your comfortable places, slept on the hardwood. Yeah. So well, I had actually, a fucking log cabin on a lake in Maine. Yeah. And I gave it up for, for this. Not for this. I gave it up to sleep in the park for Occupy Wall Street, and then stay on the sidewalk. The rest of the time. Mm -hmm. I had no idea this was coming. Wow. Really and this did. is actually like this. Uh, a step, like, you know, it. we were sleeping it's on the street a for a long time on the sidewalk. Felix's now ritual. we have this, a, which a seems thing. like when it's raining out and I'm He's sitting a, inside this bus, I feel like He's into pagan. really lucky. Yeah, like, ritual. wow, I ha I'm not getting wet right now, and if yeah. I was sleeping on the sidewalk, I would have nowhere to go now that it's raining. So the bus is not also nice because it, it can give people breaks like that are sleeping on the streets all the time. So, and then we've been able to like take a lot of people on short trips like here to New Haven to uh, a, like some of the, uh, one of the Occupy farms. Um, and then we can take people that are on the streets all the time and they can get a rest in the bus or on a trip, like doing something different uh, for a little while. So. so you guys are basically alternative media and you go around to different events, try to cover it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live stream. Yeah, you yeah. Want, you want to promote your channel? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have a, a Ustream channel. It's a yeah. Peaceful Warrior on Ustream, um, P-I-E. C E F U L W A R R I O R at Ustream. Um, 
And then the blog is occupybustour2.wordpress.com. And uh, we also have just the Occupy Bus Tour. Um, dot wordpress dot com, which has like the first couple months, but then we filled that one up, so we started a second blog now. So first six months, that time. Yes, yeah. this, is, this is awesome. It's definitely inspiring. Yeah, it, it really That's is. I I mean I I would I wanted to just like be able to plant seeds like wherever we went like all and and this was like this is like one of those seeds like somebody sees it in real life and they're like wow you can do that like I can do that so you know maybe it will do something for them to make a change to try to figure out like what piece of the solution they could do maybe it's not this maybe it's something else but so that's real cool <laughs> I like it Thanks. I like it you guys are awesome, awesome. You know, most most deaf says uh, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. And I think that this is a shining example of that. You know, you're actually doing it. You know, you're setting an example for people and that's what we want to see. And we love it. Thank, Thank you. you for doing what you guys are doing. Thanks. Yeah, they're going to put it in 1, 7, 3, 6. Go, 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 Godzilla. Yeah.